July is traditionally the weakest month of new game releases of the year. It's in the middle of the summer, and typically you don't see a lot of big games dropping in the month. Last year we did see Ghost of Tsushima, but you have to remember that it wasn't even originally scheduled uh, for a July release until the world went to hell. So this July, once again, relatively quiet, but there are some notable titles that I do want to make you guys aware about. So we're going to be going over eight upcoming titles coming to the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 in July. So let's get right into it. Kicking things off Neo the world ends with you is a game that I am incredibly excited about world ends with you I paid $40 for back in 2008 on the Nintendo DS and I just love that game the music was excellent the story was great the cast of characters was fantastic and now all these years later, 13 years later, we finally have a follow-up after re-releases on the smartphone and on the Nintendo Switch. We have a true follow-up to The World Ends With You in Neo, The World Ends With You, and it's retaining a lot of the elements that we knew and loved from the original game. The music, the stylish look, however, it's also changing some things, obviously. It's not going to have as big of an emphasis on the touch controls. It's on the PlayStation 4 after all, so you have to, you know, step back on that a little bit. But the music is still absolutely there, and the essence of World Ends With You is absolutely retained in Neo The World Ends With You. Look for an evolution here, not a complete restructuring of The World Ends With You. A lot of um, similar elements and characters are going to be present here as well. So let's see how it turns out July 27th, and hopefully this game is received well, commercially does well, and World Ends With You can be one of the pillar JRPGs. RPG franchises for Square Enix, and we don't have to wait another 13 years to get a new game. Nonetheless, World Ends With You, Neo is out on July 27th. Okay, next up we have Tribes of Midgard. This is actually being published by Gearbox, and it's one that's going a little bit under the radar, but it is coming in July for $19.99, so pretty good price point. Tribes of Midgard is a new game in which players must resist the oncoming invasion of giants during Ragnarok. Set in the worlds full of dark creatures, hidden gods, and abundant materials to be uncovered, you play as a Viking list living in the village that houses the seed of Yggdrasil, the last bastion that protects the gods from the other realms. Explore the wilderness to craft new weapons and be prepared to defend the sacred center of your village from the grim shadows of Helheim that prey upon its power. All the while, giants stalk ever closer to the village, seeking to destroy Midgard and fulfill the prophecy of the end of the world. Again, at a 19.99 price point, this could be one of the more surprising games of the summer. Drops July 27th, so be on the lookout for that one. Okay, next up, we have the great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Yes, Ace Attorney is back, and you can immerse yourself in a dramatic yet charming and witty world of evidence gathering, deduction, and courtroom battles with this double pack of the adventures of rookie lawyer Ryanosuke. Now, obviously, Ace Attorney has been around for a very long time. Unfortunately, we have not seen consistent releases over here in the West. Thankfully, we got the Ace Attorney trilogy a few years ago. That seemingly did pretty well, and now we have the great Ace Attorney Chronicles. It seems like Capcom is trying to release those franchises and give support to those franchises that maybe aren't the biggest over here in the West. You know, they're not at the level of a Resident Evil or a Devil May Cry or even a Monster Hunter, but they are still ones with a fan base and Ace Attorney fits that bill to a T and it's nice to see the great Ace Attorney Chronicles come over here to the West. It will be out July 27th. Next up, we have The Forgotten City. It notes travel 2,000 years into the past and relive the final days of a cursed Roman city where if one person sins, everyone dies. Unravel the mystery at the city's heart by exploiting its deadly time loop, questioning locals, exploring and solving puzzles, the fate of the city is in your hands. So this is more of an adventure mystery title with some puzzle solving. The time loop element is something that does worry me a little bit. It's really hard to nail that from a storytelling standpoint. Like when you get time manipulation and time travel right in a game or a entertainment medium, a show, whatever the case may be, it can be done really well. It's just that there is so much ways to go wrong and completely butcher the story, and there's very, very little room for error. However, hopefully with The Forgotten City, they do deliver something very compelling, at the very least from a gameplay standpoint, but let's hope that the narrative comes together very strongly as well. The Forgotten City is due out in July. Next up, here's one that if you're a fan of action platformers, and shoot them up, it's going to be right up your alley. Blaster Master 03. Yes, Blaster Master has been one of the surprising great franchises in recent memory. And the pinnacle of mutant blasting action is here. Blaster Master 03's hybrid of side scrolling and top down action is back for its third chapter and more intense than ever before. Obviously, it's got an old school look going on for itself, but with this one, 
It is going to bring Jason back to where the series all began, the planet Sophia, in order to save the series heroine Eve in the final insta installment of the Blaster Master Zero trilogy. And the finale is going to be coming on July 29th. If you have yet to check out Blaster Master Zero 1 and 2, they can be had for very, very cheap. So I would recommend you to go out of your way to check those out, especially if you're into games like this and into the games that Inti Creates brings. Because typically they are quite well done and quite well fleshed out. Blaster Master Zero 3 is is due out on July 29th. Next up, we have Samurai Warriors 5. Yes, not everyone is all aboard the Tecmo Koei style of gameplay, but Samurai Warriors has had a consistent fan base, and the games, if nothing else, can be had for a bit of action, hack and slash fun, and a new Samurai Warriors begins after a seven year wait, a new installment in the tactical action series Samurai Warriors is finally here. Of course, this does have an emphasis on its cooperative play as well, so if you wanna go online co-op, that is an option as well. You've got upgraded visuals, and of course the high octane action combat game that Tecmo Koei games are usually known for. This is one that's coming out at a time that I could see generate a little bit of buzz, especially again with nothing major big budget coming out right around it i could see this being an action game that people see come out and be like okay i'll give samurai warriors 5 a look it could be something of a nice diversion till we get into the fall samurai warriors 5 is due out on july 26 next up here's one that i'm super excited for and that is chris tales coming from dreams incorporated as well as modus games the debut demo is available over on steam so if you do want to check it out that is an option this game is heavily inspired by classic japanese rpgs and you can can consider it a love letter to those of you that are fans of that genre this is a game with a gorgeous art style i mean if nothing else right away when you look at this game the art style is what really jumps out at you and it's a very very colorful game and i think it could be one that surprises a lot of people i believe it's releasing at a relatively budget oriented price point as well so it's going to be pretty good from that standpoint. Master strategic turn-based combat, uncover a fascinating story and characters, and discover a beautiful world. Climb aboard an airship or boat and traverse this handcrafted dark fairy tale world. Chris Tales is scheduled for a release on July 20th. And finally, we have Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, which, yes, another Warhammer 40k game or another game in the 40k universe. These games just come out in spades in a variety of different uh, genres and platforms. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Experience the every bone rattling explosion and soul crushing charge in Warhammer 40k Battle Sector. The definitive battle scale game of turn based strategy and fast paced combat takes you to the battlefields of the 41st millennium. So, if you're a fan of turn based strategy games or strategy games in general, this is probably going to be something right up your alley, and you can get even more immersed into the 40k lore, which there's quite a bit of that at this point. But that's going to wrap up this one. Again, if you look at all the months of the year, July definitely not quite as packed as. June. June was one of the best months of the year, but July does feel like a little bit of a come down month as we do head into August and the fall months, which do expect those months to be stacked with a lot of new game releases. That's going to wrap up this one. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.